I pay $6.25 a month. I want to know what y'all's car payments are every month. I refuse to believe that I am the only person with a high car payment. Hey, who sing that song where it be like, You ain't got to say too much from the look in your eyes. I can tell you want to pay my bills. And you can pay my car, no too. It's all up to you what you really want to do. What's up, Financial Hikes? So in today's video, we're going to be going over some more used car prices and just a used car and just the car market in general how crazy it is i've done a few videos talking about the you know the car market from people telling you how much they're currently paying on their car note uh each month from the inflation increases that we're constantly seeing it's just a lot of craziness and it doesn't seem to stop it doesn't seem to stop so um, I have a collection of a few videos we're going to go ahead and take a look at. I haven't seen these videos yet, so I'm definitely intrigued to uh, see what they're going to say. I'll give my thoughts on if I'm thinking, you know, it'll get worse or better in certain regards in this car market. And I guess maybe like on the type of cars, too. But, yeah, let me go ahead and bring up the first video. And, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and go over this and uh, I'll share this with you guys. So. Let's start with the first one. Right now is like the most expensive time, most expensive prices. Everything is taxed. Like you see me, I still have my wide body scat pack. I haven't bought <laughs> shit, bro, because prices are just fucking insane. I've been selling other cars on the side and stuff. I haven't been posting it. But man, I'm telling you right now, this market is just so overly inflated. Prices are crazy high. If you can hold off on buying a car, just wait, man. Unless you really need a car right now, buy it. Go ahead and do what you need to do. But cars, man are stupid tax and it's just a matter of time before everything turns upside down and prices start to fall this is coming from a car dealer like if you are in the market to buy a car just wait bro i promise you you'll get a car ten thousand dollars off the price you're trying to pay today just wait hold out this is my advice man, because like right now there's a lot of cars i'm gonna buy but i haven't bought them just because prices are too fucking high and i'm cheap as hell so like I said, if you're in the market for a car, just fucking wait, bro, because it's not it's not worth it at this point right now. You're going to be paying high as interest or you're going to be paying a premium for the vehicle you're trying to get. Either way, it's a lose. OK, so yeah, so that was a pretty good first one. Now, this one, let me see the actual um, date that just came out. I want to say this was like maybe earlier this year. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this was earlier. Uh, yeah. Three seventeen. So, yeah, I will say um, at least right now at least currently i have been seeing some um like videos talking about like in august september we should be seeing a lot better um car market economy for the most part it should be getting slightly better you should see the premiums kind of going down a bit uh possibly interest a little bit uh but if you do want to have a higher chance of also you know working on your interests Having a good credit score is always going to be good there because you can get a lower interest rate. Check out some of my videos talking about, you know, lower. Um, I mean, not lowering your not lowering your interest rate, but lowering um, or increasing your credit score. Um, I, I know I have like several videos on the channel that can definitely help you out on that to get you guys right on that. And that can help you out with lowering your interest, not only on your car, but like your house and other things as well. So definitely take a look at that. But yeah, uh, definitely back in March. Yeah, I was in I was hearing some terrible stuff, just terrible, 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 terrible uh, stuff with cars. And uh, thankfully, it looks like it's kind of getting slightly better. Again, this was, um, you know, a few months back. Um, I'm pretty sure after I release this video, I'll probably end up watching some more car videos uh, to see if they're still, um, you know, agreeing with him. But yeah, at that time period, you know, three, four months ago, definitely agree with that full heartedly don't buy a car especially but you know about to be spring break summertime i feel like that's a great time for people or a great time for the car places to have like a whole lot more customers um, during this time so you know we're getting closer to the what winter we're getting closer and closer to more coldness you know at least from some of the videos i've been seeing so far outside of this one but like more recently you know with things getting slightly what's the word slightly less in terms of how much you'll be paying you know maybe for your interest or your premium or whatnot hey this may be slowly it may be slowly time to go ahead and get that new car if you're thinking about it get that used car if you're thinking about it but let's go ahead and uh, start up the next one let's see what they're talking about i'm definitely intrigued to see 
what they're going to end up talking about in this. You know, after posting several videos about what goes on behind the scenes in the auctions and then, you know, my thoughts on the car market and what retail is going for and the decline ever since the last couple of years, everybody is so quick to come and be like, oh, you know, it's just a slow season. That may be true, but we're still disregarding really big key data points that we just don't want to address. During 2022, um, you know, used and new vehicles have shot up and the used car market was crazy. We're talking about 30, 40, 50% increases on, on prices. There has been so many documented like sales of cars going 13, 15, even 20 grand above hmm. what it normally would cost pre-pandemic. I mean, as you can see down here, you see this like, you know, in time, you know, things do cost more, but we see this very large spike and then another large spike. So let me paint this picture for you, right? Pre-pandemic, you had a vehicle. You bought it for a great price. Mm -hmm. Now, during the pandemic, your car during 20, the late part of 2021 and the early part of 2022 shot up. Mm -hmm. You had a nice car. You had about 10, 15K in equity. You're like, oh, my God, I want to get in something new. Most of these dealers took advantage. We're like, okay, cool. Banks haven't yet caught up. Let's go ahead and get as much money as we can. I believe people should make money. But he doesn't want to take a quick break at the one minute mark. But yeah that's that's so true like that 2020 after that whole pandemic that just messed up the car market so much like you were saying you could get this car and now you got all this extra equity because now these used cars are more than the new cars on the market like i've been seeing this still today you you'll still see new cars or i mean older cars costing more than newer cars it's crazy for example i was looking at a uh, cool car, the GR86, right? And for the most part, I've been seeing a whole lot of like 2022s, like pretty much still dang near MSRP. Throughout this year, it has decreased slightly, but like earlier this year, and they were still around 30,000, like a brand new one. But it's a 2022 costing 30,000, 31, 32,000. And again, it's used two years, you know, is this is two years ago. Like this car came out. We got the 2024s that are brand new for 30. It was just crazy. Now I'm seeing 2023 GR86 that are actually lower price than a 2022. It's just crazy right now. And it, and both of these are used. And 2022 is older, but because of that whole craziness out of the 2020, it kind of just flipped the car market in a weird uh, way. But you have a lot of a lot of these older cars costing more than newer cars. It's again, the nuts. Not a short cycle. There has to be a long term effect to everything we do, and that's been sung over and over in our economy. Boom! You got a car. You took the ten k equity. You put it down a new car that was blown over 60 percent. Mm. All right, boom! Now you have a car into twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four. And all of a sudden, we're down 20, 30 percent. Mm. And this is so normal now. I'm going to show you. I have people who have messaged me that they have regular ass cars. <laughs> this is for a 2020 Jeep Compass with like 20 or 30,000 miles. They still owe $35,000. The trade in value on that car is like 19 grand. So now for them to get into a new vehicle, they have to roll over $15,000 in negative equity. Mm. And that's going to be almost impossible now because the used and new car market is consistently dropping in value. So what car is this person going to be able to roll over into that's already not inflated like it was in 2022? And this is the case for a lot of people, unfortunately. Now people can't roll, turn over vehicles. What does that mean for dealers? We can't make deals. So now we have vehicles that are sitting on the lot more than 60 days, more than 90 days. It's costing us more money. Um, and now we're just in a situation where there's just a stagnation and prices are catching up. So now we have vehicles that we paid super high trade in values. Our turnovers are decreasing little by little, and we're just oblivious to it. Unfortunately, guys, this is not going to get better in my opinion. So, yeah. 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 That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, bought a friend of <laughs> we were talking about how the prices are decreasing as well on some of these cars. So now like for the actual dealers they're seeing a whole lot more cars like on a lot i i have been seeing that too i've been using a site called car edge if you guys haven't checked them out they're pretty cool they're like a father and son the father has been in the car market for like i think 20 30 years or something like that I mean, they're making their own company 
We help out with other people getting their cars. And the website is great, by the way. Very easy to find what type of car you're looking for uh, all throughout the United States. The price that it's currently at, um, how long it's been, you know, sitting in the lot, et cetera, et cetera. It gives you so much details, how much you should be like negotiating the car for, all that jazz. And yeah, I'm, I have been seeing at least a lot of the cars I've been looking at too lately. They have been in the lot for, um, like I said, over 30, 60 days. Some of the ones I've, I've seen over about three months, it's still sitting there and it's slowly, they're slowly decreasing the price there. So yeah, this is going to be a wild time again, um, you know, closer to this winter time. And with the economy, how it is right now, I, I'm not, I'm just not seeing the economy just all of a sudden increasing super fast uh, the next few months, you know, with people like to get a whole lot more extra money. So you got a lot of people who don't have money, got a lot of people who are losing their jobs. You got the inflation going up. It's just a lot going on. So, yeah, I'm trying to get a car right now. I guess for both sides, it can kind of be weird. But I think at least so far going into winter, it might be better for the actual buyer versus the dealership compared to what it was earlier this year or last year or two, you know, two years ago, for example. But yeah, let's go ahead and put up the next one and uh, see what they're talking about. And I got myself on the full screen right here. Let's see if I can share the screen again with you guys. This is what it costed. For context, I got the Toyota RAV4 XLE Premium. So the MSRP or the base price of this car was $32,375, hmm. but it doesn't stop there. There are so many other fees. Hmm. Factory install packages and accessories were $1,500. Port install packages and accessories were 347. Delivery processing and handling fee was 1335. So overall, the dealer price was $35,584. Mm. So Toyota also has a $500 new grad college discount. So I got $500 off the selling price. And then there is another list of fees. So taxes was $3,925. Um, there's like Registration fees, which was $65, dock fees, 85 vehicle license, 238 mm. and so many other fees. So once you add everything together, the final total is $40,561.54. In terms of financing, I got the lowest interest rate they offered, which was 3.99% over four years. So I put down quite a large amount. I put down $33,000. I'm only financing $7,500 just to get the college discount. So I'm not planning to pay it off in four years. Hopefully in a few months, by the end of the year, I can pay everything off. For context, I do live at home to so be able to save a large chunk of money, which I am very grateful for. And I've never driven a new car because the car I drove was from 2000. So I'm really happy and excited to be able to drive a new car. I always find it really interesting how dealers can vary so much in prices. So let me know what your experience is with buying a car and hope this helps yeah so man that is crazy just seeing that markup i've been seeing that a lot on these youtube videos you know like they'll have a price on their website for example like like she said like thirty thousand. okay oh you know what they'll have like twenty thousand. but then when you actually go in they start adding all these extra fees like the docking fee or this fee oh we you vacuum inside of the car. So let's go ahead and add another fee for this. Like this is constantly just adding fees. So yeah, her what? 32, 33,000 car end up being 40,000, which is crazy. But thankfully, thankfully she was able to put 30,000 down. That's, that's congratulations right there. She does live with her parents, but being able to save up that money while you're still living with your parents is still good. A lot of people, when they do, you know, like live with their parents or in that, Type of situation where they don't have to pay, you know, like rent, mortgage, etc. They just spend all their money. I'm glad that she actually was able to save all that and then pretty much buy her car uh, pretty much outright. She said to put what 7.5k down for, towards the well, I guess she has about 7.5k left that she's financing, but the interest rate is pretty low, only 3.99 percent, which is great, it's not seven, eight, nine percent, so that's good. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure she will be able to knock that out for sure this year, especially say, especially she said, you know, she's living with her parents. Let's say she was only making two thousand dollars a month. It, you know, after three, four months, you're done with that. So, yeah, good job there. But, yeah, it's just crazy. Just the different <laughs> fees that they, you know, like, like they just adding on to stuff. So it's like <laughs> it could be even harder for people to even try to get a car. So. 
the dealership are going to have to decrease the price, decrease the premiums of these cars, because if you're adding all the extra fees too, and again, the economy is how it is, and it's not even increasing. People are struggling. People are already what getting their cars towed. Like, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Like, I think I think we're getting like record numbers of the amount of people getting their cars towed right now. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna have to be a change somewhere, and. Hopefully, just on the dealer shop, uh, at least for the rest of this year, that they're decreasing stuff. And then hopefully by next year, the economy and everything can start getting back, you know, better. And everybody can start having some extra funds. But right now, people do not have extra funds. This is what it is right now. But let's go ahead and play the next one. About one in five Americans have a car note of at least $1,000 or more a month, which, according to the 10% rule, means they should be making an income of $120,000 or more. The 10% rule is an easy way to estimate how much car you can afford. You take your annual salary, divide by 12, multiply by 10%. That's your car note for the month. Here's what that looks like for someone making a $30,000 salary all the way down to $150,000. I'm the host of Life After Debt with D. Marcus Garrett. I make videos about trends and news and, and thanks for the follow. Okay. Okay. That was pretty cool. Let me stop it right here so you guys can see. Yeah. So how much car you can afford by annual salary? OK, so we got from the lowest 30K salary, $250 car note all the way down to 150K salary at a 1.25. Now, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> looking at this, like looking at the numbers now. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah. Even if I was making 30K, I wouldn't try not to have a $250 car note. At all, I'm trying to have a zero dollar car note or maybe like something a hundred dollars, hundred dollars or less. Uh, I'm trying to see, you got the 80 by 667, okay, 90k, 750. Even still, like, <laughs> even making that much, I'm not trying to have a 750 dollar car note. <laughs> I'm gonna get that down to like five, four, three hundred. You're looking at that 150k, you know, man, I'm not even trying to have a thousand dollar car note. I'm trying to get. 750, 667. But from what we've been seeing on like some of the previous videos, I think I think a lot of people are actually way higher, <laughs> way higher on the list. Looking at some of the videos again, like I'm pretty sure some of their salaries were probably like 50, 60 K. And they were saying they're paying like what? Nine hundred thousand dollars plus on their car note. So, yeah, if you follow this, I don't think I don't think it'll necessarily be bad, depending on what other things you're paying for. I don't know how much your mortgage is. I don't know how much your, you know, your electric and all the other stuff. But before we continue, I wanted to take a quick look at this. You guys won't be able to see this, but I'm going to talk it through. 30K salary. I'm going to see how much that would be in like Texas. So we got 30,000. Uh, salary Texas. Let's see how much that would be each month after taxes. So we can get like a so I can get like an SM in my head how much they're actually getting paid. Okay, you make thirty thousand dollars living in the region of Texas, you will be taxed four thousand one hundred thirty six. That means your net pay will be twenty five thousand per year. Or okay, so it's saying about like two point one. 2155. So let's see. Mine is, and I think it said 250 was the car note. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess that way it, it didn't look too bad. That 2155 minus 250 is, is uh, 1905. Now, also, too, you can probably minus like 100 or 200, maybe for your dental and your health insurance for your company. So you may have about one point seven thousand dollars after that. Now, <laughs> now, see, this is when it started getting real bad. Uh, you know what? Let me actually show you guys this right here. I think I can show you this. OK, cool. It's showing up. And let's see. Can I make this bigger? OK, I guess it's good enough. So basically. We're at one thousand seven hundred dollars um, a month now because we take off. The 150 to 250 and then we take off like a 200 for like medical dental so you, so you got about 1700 now let's say you got student loans and let's say you're paying about 400 on student loans or 
you might be paying more, but I'm going to do like on the lower side of like a 400 a month. So you're at 1,300 now. So now at 1,300, let's say your mortgage or can, okay, let's say your rent is man, like you're already day near there. Cause like, man, yeah, you already, whew. okay. Let's say you lucked out and you should only pay 800. Okay. Yeah, 500. And I mean, I'm being nice right there. Really, you probably would be paying well over a thousand, like a thousand, one hundred, thousand, two hundred. So you may be coming out maybe with two hundred dollars a month. But if you can maybe find like a cheap studio, eight hundred dollars over here, you're at five hundred dollars a month. And then we're not even talking about how much you'll, you know, be paying for like your electric and whatnot. So let's minus. Let's say your water and that is like 150, for example, or something like that. And then, um, you know, you got food, for example. Let's say you're paying like two, dang, really 300. But let's say you're just paying 250, you're at $100. Let's say you want to watch a movie, a studio movie grill. That's $120. Like you're already in the negative. So, yeah, yeah. I was just looking at those numbers for me. I'm like, it, it should be even lower, uh, to be quite honest, especially depending on what you're paying for. I guess maybe in two home household, maybe you could get by with 30K for yourself and then your spouse also paying their part, like getting their own salary that's not included in the 30K. And then like, you know, you're spending the bills and everything you have. I can see that. But yeah, it's going to be tough. 30K, 250, man. It's going to be tough. But let's go ahead and play the last one. Oh, and before we play the last one, I definitely want to hear you guys thoughts on this on this one too in the comments. Let me know. If, which one you fit in if you feel like it thirty dollars per month you're gonna spend that on your car payment yeah dad i was actually pretty excited with that that's that's pretty low these days let me replay that three hundred and thirty dollars three hundred and thirty dollars per month you're gonna spend that on your car payment yeah dad i was actually pretty excited with that that's that's pretty low these days no, kiddo, that can't be low. There's no way there's people out there spending more than that on a car payment every month. Ted, I think the national average for like a new car loan is like 700 and something dollars a month. People just don't know how to save money these days. You ought to save up until you can buy that car outright with cash. Well, Dad, I, I need a car now and I, I, I can't save up for 10 years to, to buy a car outright. Well... It, getting all these loans for cars and it's uh, you could save money if you just drank your coffee at home. You didn't go to Starbucks. You don't need to get all these Netflixes and Hulus and all those things. You just spend too much money on stuff you don't need. So I was just here to show you my new car, Dad. That's that's all I wanted to do. Well, I can't believe you wouldn't take me with you to go pick it out, okay? I could have looked it over for you and, and seen if it was actually a decent car. Dad, I've, I've never seen you under the hood of a car a day in my life. In fact, I think I remember you paying somebody to do your washer fluid. Well, I, you know, kiddo, that's enough. I've had enough. <laughs> That was pretty don't. funny. Let me do the title of that one. Uh, let's see. Buy it outright, kiddo. Your boomer dad, Carlo. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. The car market now compared to what it was, heck, three years ago, different, let alone 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know, ago. At 330, yeah, that's a steal right now for sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure back then that would have been a lot. But right now, that's like you're doing pretty good well you know only 330 dollar uh car payment but yeah everything has just been increasing in prices except the amount of money that you actually get in your paycheck so yeah i thought that was pretty funny <laughs> you know just kind of showing a different on the generations because yeah stuff that was working back then i'm sorry it's just not working like it was now so if you are older and you're looking you know into this now or heck even if you're not that older, but maybe you bought your car like three or four years ago. You should definitely pay attention to some of these videos and, you know, the car market right now, whenever you do plan on getting the car, because you will see it's a lot different. So spend some time to go ahead and you can laugh at some of these, but also <laughs> actually look at some actual sites, see the craziness with the interest rates and all this. And you can, you know, see firsthand the premiums. A lot of these cars and 
the good thing about the internet, you can go back in time. So you can see how much a car costs this year, three months ago, a year ago, two years ago, two years ago, three years ago, et cetera. And you can see how a lot of these cars kind of just increase in price as that pandemic that skyrocketed up and now slowly going down a bit, but they did skyrocket up and they're still pretty high. And, you know, again, interest rates, interest rates, interest rates, interest rates, those are increasing. Those are increasing. Those are increasing. Again, a, a one way you can help out with your interest rate being decreased is having a higher credit score. Got some videos on the channel talking about that. So definitely take a look at that and I'll see you guys in the next one.